Corporate Finance Presentation, Cost of Capital. Get ready, it's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our weighted average cost of capital, the WACC or WAC formula we looked at in detail in a prior presentation. Now we're going to be focusing in on components of that formula, drilling down into how we would get to particular components, this time focusing in on the cost of debt. So we're cost of debt here. We're looking basically cost of debt here in the formula. As we do so, we want to keep in mind the basic idea of the formula, that being we're looking at financing options. There's two major categories for the financing option. We have the debt financing. We have the equity financing. Once we think about the debt and equity financing, which are basically here and here in the formula, we got the debt and equity financing. We want to think about how we can compare those options, the debt and equity types of financing. You could think about how we can put them into the same type of format, comparing, as they say, apples to apples, same thing to same thing, so that we could do that type of comparison. In order for that to happen, we need to realize on the debt financing side of things, we have the tax impact that will be taking place. So we'll talk a little bit more about that when we're figuring out this component of the formula. Then once we have these numbers, we also want to take into consideration the current capital structure, which as we saw in a prior presentation is basically these weightings here, and that's going to be this part of the formula. So we want to keep that in mind as well. So basic idea you want to keep in mind, financing options, two categories, debt, equity, financing type of options. We want to be able to compare those two things, and then we would like to put them into a formula to help us with our current capital structure as well. If you think about it with a table type of format, we have the cost um, after taxes, the cost of debt. This is what we're focusing in on here. How do we get to that number? Now, when we focus in on it in most of our practice problems, we will be taking into consideration the tax impact as we get to basically this number. Meaning, if I was trying to compare the cost of debt here to basically the cost of equity, then the cost of debt means that we're going to get money, we're going to get financing, we're going to have to rent that money in essence, meaning we're going to have to pay something on it, pay like the rent, which is called interest. So we're going to have to pay interest on it. The interest that we pay is a deduction because it's a business type of expense and therefore we have kind of a benefit on the tax side of things. So what we would want to do is figure this as a percent after we get the benefit of the taxes, uh, the, the tax benefit that would be included. So it's not just going to be the interest rate, but we're going to get basically the after tax rate, which will be a, a benefit side of things. So we want to get that percent so that we can then compare it to something like the cost of equity type of financing. Once we have those, once we have these numbers, then we can compare it to our current capital structure and our weighting here so that we can get a weighting effect as well and think about our financing options within that structure. So we're looking into the cost of debt then, the interest rate for the company to raise capital through debt financing. So when you think about the cost of debt, you're basically thinking of the interest rate that's going to be applied. The, the problem here is the most complicated kind of problems with the cost of debt are usually related to the issuance of bonds. So the company issues bonds and they're going to then get money for the issuance of the bonds. The question is, how much do those bonds cost the company? Well, they got, you know, they got the money. They're going to have to pay what? They're going to have to pay interest. And then the interest is going to be deductible. So you have that component. So you would think it would be the interest rate. But then the bonds have this kind of funny thing where it's possible that we issue the bond for something other than the face amount of the, of the bond, meaning issued at a premium or discount. And so that difference causes a, a problem as well, because now we have a market rate in essence, and we have the rate on the bond. R which rate do we use when we're thinking about the cost of, of the interest? And to now we're generally going to use the market rate, the rate on the bond. This will become more apparent as to why that would be the case when we actually do the calculations. But in essence, note that what is happening when the market rate is different than the rate on the bond, then we had to issue the bond at either a premium or a discount. And that difference that we're recording, the difference in the value that we're receiving compared to the face amount is basically interest. And therefore, even though we're paying out interest, that is going to be the amount based on the rate on the bond, our actual interest, if you take into consideration the fact that we sold it at a premium or discount, will be reflected through that 
issuing at a premium or a discount, and there will be a tax impact over the life of the bond as we amortize that premium or discount, meaning we kind of expense it over time over the life of the bond. So we'll typically be using the market rate, and, so, and we might have to figure that out. So if you're looking at practice problems, uh, they, they might give you the market rate, which could be called the yield to maturity, or they, they might give you the price and we have to figure out the market rate. If that's the case, then these type of problems basically are going back to the prior section where we just looked at bonds basically and figuring out the price of the bond. Once you have that then, once you have basically the market rate, then you got to take into consider the tax impact. So once we have the market rate, we've decided which rate we need to use. That then is not simply the cost of the debt when we want to compare to something else like equity. Meaning if I was trying to compare, for example, two, two type of debt items, then maybe it would be enough for me just to be using the market rate to look at the interest rate when I'm looking at two different items that have interest, both of those being tax deductible because I'm comparing the same like to like, same thing to the same thing. But if I'm trying to compare the financing options of something like debt financing, which has a tax impact to financing options, which do not have a tax impact, now I can't really compare those two unless I take into consideration the fact that one has a tax implication and the other does not. So that's what we basically have to do then. The formula for that, which you want to memorize, and then you also want to kind of understand it intuitively, will look like this. Once we get the rate, we can then take a look at the tax implication. As we do this in a practice problems, highly recommend going through practice problems because when you simply learn this with a percent type of format, it can be a little abstract to learn that way. Oftentimes, if you were to work this out yourself, if you're trying to figure in this out, you just figure this out, it's all intuitive, you would probably set a debt amount like $1,000 and then figure out what the, what the amount of the interest would be, what the tax rate would be and then what the benefit would be from taxes and then you could figure out the cost of debt after tax on a percentage basis that's a longer method to do highly worth doing it does give you more information we will do that in the practice problems but it's useful to jump right on a percentage basis and think about how can we get to then the cost of debt after tax on a percentage base it will look something like this the yield which is basically the the rate that you're paying and we're using if a bond usually the market rate times one minus T, which is going to be the tax rate. So it looks something like this. We've got the interest rate. If we imagine the interest rate, the rate that we're paying the market rate to be 10%, then we're gonna take that 10% and multiply it times one or 100% minus the, the tax rate, which we're assuming in this problem to be 35%. So this would be 100% or one, this would be 0.35 or 35%. That means that we have 65% left then we take the 10% times the 65%, we get the 6.5. So what this means is that after taxes, the rate that this is costing us is really 6.5, not 10%. So the 10% is before taxes, after we take into account the tax benefit, we're at the 6.5. Now you can just memorize this, it's worth just memorizing, but you can also kind of mull it over so it makes sense to you here. Notice if you're taking about looking at this one or 100%, then that 100% you could think about as the total difference in kind of a net income that would have then a tax impact, meaning the cost in this case of, of the interest. So this would be the effect on the net income, which would be the cost of the interest. And if, if I take that 100% minus the 35%, which we imagine to be the tax rate, and note when you're thinking the tax rate, you might be thinking, well, the tax rate is a progressive tax rate. How did I get to the 35%? when it's a progressive tax rate where do we where do we get to this one number because it should be an is it an average or is it the marginal tax rate usually we'll be using the marginal tax rate even though there's a set a series of tax uh, increases because like economists say you know we're making this decision on the margin so we're imagining this decision is making at this point in time when we're already at the highest tax rate so typically we can do kind of the easier thing here pick the highest tax rate instead of trying to do some kind of weighted average on the tax rate. Usually there could be some differences to that kind of concept, but normally when you're making the next decision, the next decision from today, then you're looking at a decision that will have a tax impact at the highest rate because that's where you currently are on the tax impact. 
So that means that basically of this difference that's going to happen, the 100% of the change to net income resulting in the interest, we're basically going to get back 35% in a tax benefit, right? We're going to have to pay it in interest, but then we get it paid back or we get to reduce our taxes by 35% of it, given the fact that it's tax deductible. So that's why the 100% minus the 35, that means the 65% is really the items that ha of that, of that tax benefit, the change to the net income, the interest that's going to have an impact. So now we're going to take that 65% times uh, the 10%, which is the interest rate. And that's going to be our 6.5.